ओके राइट नाउ जस्ट नाउ वी वी लुक एट दिस एग्जांपल नेक्स्ट वन ओके आई 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 I forget to hide the answer. Okay, so if the question asks you to evaluate ln n divided by n, calculate what is the value of this uh, set of data, ln divided by n. So still repeating the same process. The first step is look at the n, the denominator n. Okay, the bottom one. What is the highest power of n, uh, Nizam? Or later, Nizam become expert already. Okay, one. So you're going to divide the whole equation, the top and bottom, with n. Okay, because n power one is one. Uh, n power one is n. So you're still going to get um. Okay, so this one is just an explanation, right? So if your if you if you do not do any process by just looking at this as equation. If you increase the n, it just tell you that uh, no matter the top and bottom, we will reach uh, infinity. So there is a way to do it. So this one we will use uh, a, a new something new to you for today. We use a hospital rules uh, that you can uh, use this concept. So okay, let me check. Ah, uh, this one I think uh, not x divided by x. Okay, so you you rewrite the equation, limit ln x divided by x. You divide by x, right? The top uh, divided by x, you will get one over x divided by x. In this case, if you increase the x to infinity, divided by uh, this one infinity. One over x is zero. Zero divided by infinity, you get zero. Okay, don't confuse ah. Huh? Just now you divide with zero, that's why you get infinity. Now you take zero divided by infinity, you just get zero ah. Huh? So recall back the theorem one. If you have a convergent data, like this one. Right. If you have a convergent data, you have a constant value. This one. So if you look at the hospital rules, and you link with the question, the n replaced by x. Okay. And this is the theorem that we agree just now. So the answer will be zero. The answer is zero. Okay. The answer is zero. Okay, so take some times to process these slides. Basically, this is a new, new, new things ah for today. Okay, so a new thing that uh, I just show you that there is a method to solve this kind of question, and uh, we are using hospital rules to, to to solve this question. Hospital rules means that um, you use a, a ln function to solve. Means you convert ln x into one over x. You look at another one. So all these example you can look at the screen on uh, my slides. So the next example is to determine whether the sequence A sequence is converge or diverge. So I'm still testing you uh, the concept of uh, converge and diverge. So the first step you try to write out the the data. So if you write the data, means if you if your first set of data is If your data a n equal to minus one power n, you in you start with the n equal one. N equal one, you get minus one. Minus one, if your n increase to two, minus one power two, you get one positive one. If you n become three, this is the third one. Minus one power three, you get minus one, and then you continue. Fourth one. Is the n equal four? One minus minus one power four, you get positive one, and you continue. You will see that this kind of data is minus one positive one minus one positive one. If you see this kind of data, 
What do you think? Is it convergent or divergent? If I give you a data, this set of data. Now we've seen before, uh, I give you an example already. Convergent and divergent graph. This is one of the example I give you. So what kind no, of divergent. data is this? This is divergent, eh? Because you, you cannot get, get one, one fixed number. This one is fractured between one and minus one. So from here, the answer is divergent. Yeah? So this is just to uh, test whether you're understanding or not, right? It should be easy for you. And um, the answer, since it's divergent, then the answer doesn't exist. So in exam, if the your answer is divergent, you, you mentioned, okay, this set of data, A, N, is divergent, or you can use another language or another uh, explanation. You can say that you put a limit there, limit N to infinity for set for this set of data A, N. In this case, you substitute A, N as minus one N, do not exist. Means you do, you, you, your data is divergent. Doesn't exist means divergent. Your data is divergent. Okay, let's let's look at this one. So until you 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 familiar with the process, so evaluate means calculate whether if is exists exist means uh, whether you get a convergent or divergent uh, data. So you evaluate minus one power n divided by n, and then you have a limit there. So still you can use uh, visual tools. There are two way. Either you use a graph you can plot a number by increasing the n. So this is how you get the data. So you import lah. If your n is one, if your n is one in the equation, minus one power one you get minus one divided by one you get minus one. Okay. Then you increase to two. Increase to two, you get positive, right? You n equal to two now. Minus one power two, you get positive one divided by two. Uh, you get uh, one over two, so it's it, it reducing half. That's why you see the second dot uh, far there, right? The uh, second dot uh, or the, the 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 far red dot there, you get 0.5. Then you continue the n, substituting the n. You are going to see this data is approaching what? Is approaching what number? Zero. Approaching. Uh, approaching zero. So this kind of data tell you what? It is diverging or diverging? Uh, converging or diverging? Converging. Uh. This kind of data is converging uh, because it's going to, if you increase the n big enough, we're going to end on this line. Okay. So, so by theorem two, uh, theorem two that we will learn just now, if if your a n you have the goalpost means if this one is positive value, then uh, your you you put a limit there, you'll get zero. Means this set of data is going to be Zero means uh, this set of data only converge when you put a goalpost for this equation. If you put a goalpost there, then this axis means the data is converged. Uh, okay. uh, so this is how you explain mathematically. Okay. So for the first chapter, if you don't know how to answer, you can use graph to help you if you really don't know. But uh, if you do practice enough, uh, you just in your mind, you can see the red dot in your mind already. Then uh, you can use the theorem one or theorem two to explain whether it's converged or diverge. Okay. So, yeah. So you can rewrite all this, okay? So means you put the double goalpost there. This one will you can write as one over n. 
then if you increase the n, 1 divided by infinity, you get 0. Okay. 1 divided by a very big number, it will be near to 0. Okay, check. Uh, we go very fast a little bit on uh, properties on a convergence sequence again. Now I uh, teach you theorem 3, the third uh, theorem. Uh, okay. What what mean by this theorem? Just get familiar with the pattern. So this is a, how you write a sequence. If you have an AN, an AN means a set of data or sequence. So if your sequence, you put in a limit there and equal to N means this set of data is convergent, means it will arrive at a value L. And if you have a function, your function is continuous at n, means uh, if you use a function to uh, evaluate this set of data, and you continue to get L value. Let's say you, you substitute the you use function uh, using the equation, right? You know the an can be a, a function. Just now, example, 2, 3, 4 is a function, uh, is an is a equation. So you substitute, every time you substitute the, the x value or the n value, you arrive at one particular number if it's convergent. If it's divergent, then you get infinity. So if you get L means it's a convergent, then you can write this mathematics equation. Okay, if it continues to hit a stable number, then you can use this equation. You can write function a n equal to function L. Function a n, a n means the sequence or the set of data or the equation. You can straight away write function L or it's a constant value. Function L is a constant value, right? Or you substitute the function with L value. Um, I will include this appendix in Moodle. So later you can go uh, and see how people prove this uh, theorem. I'm not going deep into this one. Okay, so you can go and read the data in uh, the, the, the proving steps, huh? how you get this uh, theorem in Appendix F. I'm going to upload this one in Moodle later on. Okay, let's look at this set of data. Now we start to look at the trigonometry or cos tangent sine. In this example, we look at sine example. So you have sine pi divided by n and uh, you put a limit there, limit n to infinity. So it asks you to find the value for this set of data or this uh, sequence. Okay, how do you find? You know that in normal sine wave, it look like this one, right? This is a sine wave, sine pattern. Okay, if you plot your value versus the uh, angle, okay, angle. So you know that when it be, when we near to zero, it will continue to go up, right? So if you plot sine, for example, sine zero, after zero, it's going to go up. Then after the second point you hit zero, you're going to go down. Either you go up or go down. So sine wave is have one pattern called continuous. So function uh, for, for sine equation or sine graph, it's going to continue moving after zero, after zero value. For example, the first one, the first point there, the zero will continue to climb up if you increase the angle, okay? And here also zero, it's going to drop then this one, the second point, go up and then go down again and then go up. So if it is continuous at zero, by using the, the theorem just now, the theorem number three, if you, your, your sequence is equal to L and you have this equation just now, the function a n equal to function of L. So what does it mean? By interpret what you can see from this equation here, general equation here, you apply back to sine uh, wave. What you can write here is that limit of sine 
pi divided by n, you can pull your limit into this value, into this value, okay, into this value. So you can write limit of sine equal to sine limit and then the value, angle value. So you try to think if you pi divided by something big because you're increasing your n, pi divided by something big, you get zero, right? Uh, this this bracket or this uh, uh, this bracket, if you increase the n, you'll get zero. So sine zero equal to zero. So this answer for this uh, sequence. Yeah. So this is the application of the limit limit law just now. Okay. Look back at, at the slides. Sometimes you can move the, the limit into the number here. Okay. Okay, let's look at uh, one more example. You look at one sequence here. You are given a sequence a n equal to n apostrophe divided by n power n. And just to recall what you learned in max one or in your basic mathematics, if you are, what is n as prosophy? n as prosophy means you add the number or you multiply the number uh, until n. For example, if you get three as prosophy means you, you multiply one, uh, you take one multiplied by two multiplied by three. So you get six. Okay. So if you look at this equation, uh, this is uh, equation here. What happened if you increase the n to infinity? Well, what do you think? Okay, look at the top first. n, n as prosophy. What mean by n as prosophy? And you are you are multiplying uh, infinity number. What do you get? What do you think you get the, on the top for the numerator? You get infinity, right? You get infinity, right? Okay. So, and then the second one, infinity power infinity. Try to think what, what will it be. So, the top one, the top, we call it numerator. The bottom one, we call it denominator. Both will reach infinity. So, infinity divided by infinity, what, what do you think you get? So, um, just just to try out. So, you you have the first. Let's say you try out the first number, n equal one. N equal one. What happened to this equation? So you write a one equal. So, if you n as prosophy means one. One as prosophy is one. And n is one, so one power one, you get one. So that's why the first one, you get one. What about two? If you n increase to two, what happened to this one? So I write it for you, the second equation. You increase the n to two, the top one, n as prosophy, two as prosophy means you take one times two. And now you become the second set already. So become the n become two. So two power two, you get, Two times two. You, you do the again for the third set. You increase the n equal three. So a three equal to three apostrophe. What I mean by three apostrophe is one times two times three. And what I mean by uh, now your n is three. So three power three is this one. Okay. Three power three is three times three times. And so on. Okay. So, if you're hardworking, you can plot the graph uh, by using uh, the numbers that you derive or you calculate. So, for example, the first n, if your n is 1, you get 1. n is 2, you get uh, 2 over 4, which is half. And then, if your n equal to 3, you get somewhere here. And you continue doing calculation. You plot on the graph. A n versus n and n approaching inf uh, infinity. Nizam, what kind of graph you get? 
Converge or diverge, this kind of graph? Converge. Converge, okay. Now need some expert on, on the converge diverge, okay? So, uh, yeah, so if you have any question on the converge diverge, go and ask uh, Nizam. Eh? So Nizam expert already. All right. So as you can see here, the graph approaching converge. And you and from the graph, you know, it converges near to zero. Okay. Near to zero. So you can write, like, actually, uh, this equation, if you expand it from this one, right, from this one, you can expand it to this form. And you can uh, you can uh, pull you can pull the um, the equation out to become this one. Okay, let me see uh, whether I write it correct or not. I pull and yeah. All right. Yeah, you can you can factor like this. So if you analyze only the bracket value means you multiply the top number one multiply two multiply three and then until you multiply to infinity, you get infinity. This one also will reach infinity. Okay, so you divide these two, you will get uh, the value will near to one. This one, okay. You do maybe you do the a few set lah, just to test it out. For example, you test up to two set or three set, then you'll get the number of the square circle. The value of the square circle will near to one. So for example, the first set. First set, you get 1 divided by 1. You do the second set. If your n is 2, then you get 2 over 4. The third set is 6 divided by 27, and so on. So from here, what you can see here is that actually you can transform this, this pattern into this equation. So as you can see here, the value of a n will always be bigger than 0. However, it will be smaller than 1 over n. How you know that? Because this one will always near to 1. So actually, a n maximum number is 1 over n. Okay, But it cannot be 0. It will be bigger than 0 because a 1. 1 over n is something bigger than 0. So this is how you transfer the information of this one into this one. Okay, so it takes some time to digest here to here. The process I already show you. What happened if you only have one set, two set, three set? I three I do three set derivation for you. So as you can see here, the number will be from zero to one over n. Even you plot the graph, you will see that it is converged. Okay. So if the n equal to infinity, you know that your data are going to reach zero also. So as you can see here, what you can say about this data, if it asks you to discuss whether it's converged or, uh, or diverge, it is converged. Because if you increase your n to infinity, you're going to get zero. Zero is one fixed number, so it's converged. Okay. So uh, again, this is also uh, support by the squeeze theorem just now. Okay. Okay. We go for uh, the squeeze theorem. I already explained uh, just now. Okay. The next one is sequence. The the new 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 type of sequence, new type of data. Now you have your R power n, the power series. R power n. We have three set of data here. What happens if your R is one? If your R is one, if your R is one, no matter how you change the n, you will always get one straight line. 
Okay, your an always arrive at one if your r is one. Now, what happens if you change the range of uh, r? If your r is less than one, and you can plot graph, huh? you can calculate also. What happens if your r is less than one? You will get the red dot data. You can try out. If your R less than one, let's say 0 0.5. 0 0.5 power one, you get 0 0.5. Uh, then 0 0.5 power two, power three, power four, and continue. You're going to get the number, the red, the red color dot will eventually close to zero. So what does it mean? If your R is one, you're going to get a converged data because you always get one. If your R power something, R power N, and your R is less than zero, you can see the red dot pattern is going to reach zero if you increase the N. However, if you change the R more than one and you increase the N, let's say your R is two, Two power n and you increase the n, you're going to get the blue dot pattern. And from here, you should agree that we can say the blue dot data is diverged because the data keep increasing and never reach one stable value. So be careful if you get r power something or a value power something, power n, you have a zone of converge and diverge. This one give you converge, this one you will converge, but if your R is more than one, you get diverge. Okay, so be careful when you get this kind of sequence, this kind of uh, equation. Just be careful, huh? you have two, two, uh, two good data or converge data, but this is not a good one. You are always increasing, right? So this one I want you to watch. And this is another set of data. Okay. So this is this is zero to one. Eh? This is zero to one. So what happened if your R is less than less than zero? Okay, this set of graph is zero to one. Eh? I give you another another graph. What happens if your R value is less than one? Uh, less, sorry, less than zero. Meaning you have a negative value. If you plot your graph of value, if you change your R value between zero to minus one and you increase your N, you're going to plot the red color dot here. So again, if you see the red color dot, you should agree that red dot data is converged because it's going to reach zero. However, if your R value here, this equation, R value is less than minus one, you substitute minus one here and you increase your N, you're going to get the blue dot. What happened to blue dot if you increase your N? You're going to like, open up the value. The value is going to jump up and down and the distance between the previous one will going to become bigger and bigger. By this graph, you should also agree that if your R is less than one in this equation, in this equation, you are going to get diverged sequence. Okay. So I combine these two graphs that I explained just now. You have a few set of data there. You have a converge and diverge pattern in these two graphs that I explained. So to get a converge pattern, you extract from this graph. If you have a R power N equation for sequence for your data calculation, you have uh, okay, converge one. Uh. Converge one is this one, this one, 
and this one. So the converge one will happen when your R value is between one and minus one. Okay, this one converge, R equal to one converge, zero to one also converge, minus one to zero also converge. So you combine the red dot pattern, this one, this one and this one, you combine these three range, you can write them in this one, meaning this equation of converge, if the R value, if the R value is between one and minus one, and it cannot, you see the, it, they see the symbol there, minus one R must be, R must be bigger than minus one. Huh? Be careful on the notation on the, on the inequality there. Okay, R cannot be equal to minus one. Huh? If R equal to minus one, this one is going to cannot be converged. Yeah, we still we still testing understanding in uh, converge. So mathematic form, this is another uh, can say theorem. If you have a power equation and you need to build this uh, power sequence or this sequence uh, to reach converge you can write this equation. So if your R is from one to one, you get zero. However, if your R is one, it's one. So this, this is the mathematic presentation of these two graphs to get the converge pattern. So this is a new equation for today. New equation for today to define a a power equation, R power something, R power N, to converge, you use this uh, presentation, you write in this way, okay? okay let me watch the time, okay. We go for maybe two or three more slides, then we, we stop, huh? Okay, so earlier, when we talk about series or sequence, in our first lecture, we mentioned about Zeno paradox. What I mean by Zeno paradox? Zeno claim that this mathematician claimed that if this person fall into Zeno paradox, this man will never reach the, the door. All right. So, however, however, if this man have enough infinity chances means you always give chances to do the walking because the, the, the type of the walking is always half of the previous one. Okay, For example, the first set of the distance can travel is half of the distance. So from the door until the end is one meter. First set, it can only take half of the previous distance. So it can take, it can walk half of half meter. Then the second uh, set, this man can walk is a uh, quarter distance, then uh, one over eight, and so on. So, Zeno paradox, he claimed that this man can never reach the wall. However, if we give this man enough time, enough opportunity, increase the end up to infinity, this man will able to reach the wall. Okay, that's why I put the red statement there. Okay. If we give this man enough chances to try out, although the, the distance from here onwards is very, very small, but we increase the end to infinity, this man eventually will get to the wall, provided we give them the chance. Huh? The chance. So you know that the distance from the wall until the end of the line there is one meter. So if you build an equation to calculate the distance between the wall and the distance traveled by this man under Zeno paradox, you can use this equation, right? You have this series, right? You have this, not series, you have this sequence, right? Because you know that the total distance 
from the wall until the end of the line there is one meter. And the distance travel is always half of the previous one. So when you add all the steps made by this man, eventually if you add all the steps together, eventually you'll get one meter. Logic, all right? So how do we um, how do we write mathematics uh, equation for this infinity sequence? Again, this is the pattern or this is how we write sequence for infinity sequence. And we already explained what is the limit, the, the infinity and the n equal to one. So in this example, your n start with number one. If your n start with two means you count from step number two. So this is an example where the set of the data start with number one until infinity. Okay, so if you use this equation or this sequence, you start with n1 to infinity, you can transfer this equation into this equation. Okay, so if your sequence given like this one and you want to add all the number inside this sequence or you want to add all the number from the first number until infinity. This is the mathematic operation that you do. Can we write this process in the short, uh, very uh, simplified uh, 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 mathematics formula? You can. Huh? So again, if you have the three dot here means infinity and I introduced you before one word before we go. You learn one new word called series. Before all the lecture here, we, we learn about sequence. Sequence is number. Okay, sequence is number. First number, second number, third number, four num fourth number, and so on. Today you learn one more word called series. If you want to add all the number together inside the data, inside this bracket data, the process or the, or the action is called series. For example, what is the series of that particular formula? Means you add all the number together. Before this, we learn about sequence. Huh? So at the moment, you should know what is sequence, what is series already. Huh? Sequence is individual number. Series is a submission, a uh, you add all the number together. And this one you have to depend on the limit that beside the equation. Okay, so series and sequence, you have to differentiate. Huh? Series, uh, sequence and series. And we will introduce you new presentation for series. You will see this sum symbol. This sum symbol. So this sum symbol n equal one to infinity. It follow how many number you want to add. If you want to add one to ten, then n equal one. On the top you write ten. This is the end point. This is the low point. Okay, high point, low point means you start with from where until where. In this case, you see infinity. Sometimes, sometimes also, if you don't see anything on the top and below, you know that this represents series also. Although you do not know what is the limit, what is the starting point and end point. However, this one also means series. Yeah. On the top, this is the sequence if you if you mention or you you mention or you, you you mean to communicate that that number is a sequence then you write in this form if you mean to answer the question and a question asks you to find series then you write in the blue light blue color form okay so if the question asks you to answer series and you accidentally write your answer this form I'll give you wrong answer because this mean sequence. You have to read carefully uh, the question. Sometimes the question asks you to 
a soft series means you need to add all the number together. If the question asks you use sequence, uh, asks you about sequence, then you use this symbol, curly bracket, and then the function to represent sequence or number. If the question asks you to solve for series, then you use this symbol. Okay, important. This is a series symbol uh, that you learn today. Okay. Go for a few more slides. Um, this is just a, a, a question. Does it make sense to talk about the sum of the infinity of many numbers? Does it make sense if you continue to add number together uh, until infinity? So actually, if you want to add all the numbers until infinity, the answer is infinity, right? Because you're going to add, the number become bigger and bigger. But if you have a limit from, let's say the first number until 100 number, a number, number, number at uh, 100 places, right? One to 100. So you add one to 100 together, you will get one particular number, okay? So, this is the red color. Huh? So if, if you want to add all the numbers until infinity, it's, it's a very exhausting process. And sometimes it's very impossible to find for infinity number. And you put this equation in the computer and you ask the computer to find the, uh, to find the series, to find the series, huh? means the sum of number until infinity, the computer going to hang, okay? Yeah. So recall paradox. So sum of distance here, if you add all the distance together, you know that you eventually go uh, reach uh, one. So if you do the uh, the test, uh, if you do the test uh, for submission, what, what does this table tell you? Mean if you if you add the number one time, so means if you only add one time, so you get 0 0.5. If you only add two number, means uh, one, point, uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4, you get 0 0.75. What happens if you add three number uh, together? If you add increase to three, means you add uh, three number. We are now at the series already, yeah? We are now talking about series and not sequence. Huh? Series means we add number together. Our n here no longer represent one number. Huh? We are talking about series now. So in series topic, n become how many number you add together. If your series n equal one means you only add one number. If series n two means you add the first number and the second number. If your n is three means you add the three number means if you look at this set of data, one over two plus one over four plus one over eight, you plus them together, you're going to get 0 0.875. And you continue to increase the n means at the, 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 the total number that, that you add together from one until let's say 25. You're going to get, you can see the number from this table the number will be increasing from 0 0.5 until 0 0.999. And you, you, can, you can see that the decimal is increasing, but still stay at 0 0.999 and very near to one. Very near to one, you'll be rich one. So this is a pattern of a series. Huh? So second, second, uh, second part of this lecture, I introduce you what is series. Huh? Series is the addition of the number together. Okay. All right. So how do you write series uh, equation? So you use the blue color to represent series. Huh? The blue color summation equal to the one over two power n. This you recovered before huh? because the Zenoch paradox, there's a pattern, one over two n. So you want to represent this series 
then you use the light blue color to represent series. Okay, eventually the answer for this Zeno paradox, and I, I show you with this table, in series topic, uh, in the series chapter or series topic, series is the addition of all the numbers if you increase the n. n here is the number of uh, how many numbers we add together. So if you increase the n, you reach one number. So in this case, zero paradox, this equation gives you one. Okay, so with this, I end today's lecture. Um, okay, let me end the recording.